What is up everybody, it's the Don with the Don Tech, and in today's video I wanted to go ahead and show you what computer I would build today if I was going and going to be in the market to building a new computer. This is going to be the exact list of parts that I would exactly purchase. No thrills, no frills, no like, well I might think this would be pretty good, these are going to be the exact parts I would buy. So if you're looking for a new computer, you want some good recommendations, follow this guide and we can go from there. So thank you Jason for the excellent question, I hope you find this video helpful and it answers what you need. And if anybody else has any questions about anything, leave them in the comments down below. So to make it nice and easy, I'm gonna go ahead and put this link in my description itself. To make it nice and easy, this is a list from PC Parts Picker of all the parts that I thought I would put in my computer if I were to build it today. I have each of them opened on a new egg tab to go over them in brief detail to just give you an insight and everything like that. But scrolling through a little bit, you know, we've got an Intel-based machine, Corsair cooler, Asus motherboard Corsair RAM, Samsung M.2 SSD, Western Digital hard drive, an Asus Strix 1070 graphics card, a really nice case that I found today actually, and a Corsair power supply. I don't have an optical drive and I don't need an optical drive. The operating system I already have a copy of so I don't need to worry about that. No additional software, I've got the monitor, external storage is fine, expansion cards I don't need, any peripherals, I've got a plethora of those, and accessories and other custom, all that sort of stuff, I don't need those things. So without taking into account any promotions or anything like that, aside from the mail and rebate they say that we have here, it's coming out to just under $2,000. And I plan on getting all of these things, or I would plan on buying all of these on Newegg, but I would price check accordingly with Amazon. Uh, PC Parts Picker will actually show you, as you can see here, all the different parts, and the or not the parts, but all the different places you can get the price um, of the particular part and how much it's going for, if they have any discounts, potentially, you know, they say promos, but Newegg a lot of times will send promos to your email so you can buy them from there. So moving forward here, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the processor. Now I stuck with Intel on this and I'm gonna to continue to stick with Intel until AMD proves to be a stable platform to go through. And with Threadripper on the horizon and all that stuff, you know, it's gonna be good performance, but is it gonna be reliable? It should, but in this day and age, if I were to, like I said, build a computer now, I'm still sticking with Intel, they still have my money, and the 7700K KB Lake quad core processor is where I would go. There's a couple of different variants of the Intel that you can get with and I would recommend that you go no lower than an i5, probably the 6600, because the 6600K, which is the unlocked, a little bit higher clocked variant, is going to be around $100 less than this $240 price. And if you had a question as to whether or not the difference between an i5 and an i7 of this nature but the previous generation actually does anything, check out my videos because I have a benchmarking and results video based on that exact question. I'm gonna switch these tabs because I actually want to talk about the motherboard first. So in relation to going with a nice Intel processor, I'm also going with a really nice Asus motherboard. The Asus Republic of Gamers line, beyond amazing with all the builds that I've used it on. And I've used it in a several different, uh, several amount of builds, including the one at my office, my gaming computer, and my current editing machine. They have the previous generation of which, uh, the pretty much the Z170 instead of the Z270, but the Z270 is just pretty much the same board, but better. And they have a couple of different variants, but as long as you're on the Maximus 9 series, they have the Apex, Formula, Code, and Extreme. The formula is gonna be for a water cooling centric, usually in the $300, that's definitely overkill. The Extreme, I think as well, might even be worse than that. Yeah, so it's even worse than that. I mean, check out that cooler on it. I mean, the, the water block on it and everything. So that's the Extreme Extreme, don't worry about it. Code, I think is the next best one. It's got the thermal plating armor on it, as you can see, and that is actually a really nice aesthetic. If you have the extra money to swing for it, definitely do that. To keep everything cool, I'm gonna go with the Corsair Hydro H105 240 millimeter dual radiator all-in-one liquid cooler. Coolers themselves, they have a couple of different options you can go towards. I prefer to avoid the the series that end in an I. So I, I think, is like for their Corsair Link, their integrated series and everything like that. I want to avoid that myself personally because not only do you get a couple of extra uh, cables that you would have to maintain or plug into the bottom of your motherboard on a USB cable, um, it just kind of has stuff that I don't really care about in that regard. So I like to stick with the 105 itself. It's a fantastic cooler just without that whole nonsense of the I integration, which you might use 
one time in your life, but you're never going to really use it again. And it's a phenomenal cooler, and it's a 240 millimeter. So I'd recommend with the case that I'm going towards, which I'll get to in a little bit, sticking with a 240 millimeter radiator. The reason for it is it's going to give you better performance than a traditional 120 millimeter, and it's going to be more reliable than a 360 millimeter cooler because they don't like Corsair themselves does not make a 360 millimeter radiator. They only stick with the 80 or with the uh, uh, the 120s and the 240s. And they have some 280s, but that's a different measurement altogether. So they don't have the 360s. One of my computers is using a 360 uh, radiator right now. It's at the office. It's the Fractal Celsius S36. It's a really nice cooler from what I can tell, but I need to get more reliability and more lifespan under my belt before I start recommending it. Moving on, we're going to go on to the memory itself. So the two major brands of memory that I would prefer is going to be Corsair, and that's either going to be the Dominator or the Vengeance series, or G-Skill Trident Z. What I tried to match and maximize here was going to be the gigs and everything like that, because eventually I would put 64 gigs of RAM inside of a machine. It helps me out phenomenally. So I like to have that open expansion, so by buying two 16 gigs, you have the ability to expand, again, to another two 16 gigs. Another thing I was looking for outside of brand being reliable, you know, Corsair Dominator is their top of the line series of memory that they have, is going to be the speed and the timings and the latency. So traditionally, the higher the speed, this DDR3000 right here, the PC4 24000, the higher the speed, the higher they have to make the cast latency, thus the worse your timings are. So the best mixture that you can find is something that has a higher than stock latency, or higher than stock speed, which I think the speed for DDR4 is like 2000, 2600, something like that. I don't exactly know, but even those aren't necessarily running at amazing timings, so you have a little bit of room to go up in speed to get okay timings. 15 timing uh, for the cast, la cast latency of 15, and then those timings are okay for this caliber. If you buy lower sticks of memory that are, say, the 8 gig variant or even the 4 gig variant, usually you're going to have more wiggle room on making the cast latency a little bit lower and getting faster timings. So I just try to find the best match of the speed and timings so I'm not getting a ludicrous amount of speed that I don't need with timings that won't work for me. Moving on to the actual storage itself, I have one of these 960 EVO M.2 SSDs inside of my work computer, and that sucker is fast, let me tell you. If you wanted to save some money and just go with a traditional SSD, you can. It's probably going to be about $50 less, about $199 or $179 for a Samsung 850 EVO 500 gig SSD. Either one of those and you're going to be golden, but if I was building a machine today, I would stick another one of those in there, no problem, and I actually plan on buying another one of these to upgrade my editing machine as well. And since it's only a 500 gig SSD, I wanted to go ahead and make sure I would have enough room for my uh, storage of my media, music, and all that sort of stuff. So Western Digital and their black line drives are pretty much the only drives I would trust for anything really important. So you can choose any size that you want based on your particular needs. I went with the middle ground 4 terabyte for 200 bucks. The six terabytes, what, 300 something? So 279 for that. And the two terabytes even less at probably, well, they don't have it on Newegg itself, so I can't tell you how much it would be from Newegg. Uh, so the four terabyte, 200 bucks, that's a fantastic value. And the best part about the black variant drives is that if you go to the warranty, they've got a five-year warranty. It's really, really nice that you have a five-year warranty on it, and you really don't have to worry about the drive uh, going bad on you because these are their top-of-the-line drives. Seagate has some drives that are more robust, not more robust than this per se, but are more robust than their traditional drives have been. So that's a potential that those could be good, but I would definitely avoid the Western Digital green drives, and even, I don't think the blue drives go up in this high capacity, so you don't really have to worry about that. But the red drives and the purple drives, you know, they, they do the stinking rainbow, it seems, with all the colors that they have. But red is for NAS, purple is for surveillance, and the red is probably the next best one I'd recommend, but you're cutting down on your speed, where it's, instead of being 7200 RPM, it's like 54 or 5900 RPM, and it doesn't have a five-year warranty. Next is going to be the graphics card itself. Now, when I was adding this, just a little bit ago, this was in stock, I swear. So that's even something that actually, if we go to the PC parts picker for the graphics card, did it say anything about, it said it on Newegg, okay? See, 434 Newegg, it wouldn't have shown it on Newegg if it wasn't in stock, okay? Just so you know. So I went with a 1070 because I have had experience with the 1050, 1060, 70, and 80, and the TI. 
And in my experience, the 1060 is going to be perfect for most 1080p gaming, and the 1070 is going to give you some wiggle room to go up to 1440p if you want, and give you some really nice, just if you want to really maximize things, if you want to stream or something like that, the 1070 is a really good card. The 1080 is beyond perfect for 1440p, and you can even get into some 4K gaming at that point. I'm using the 1080 Strix variant in my gaming computer, and it does not give me a single problem. And second to last here, I've got the Corsair RM. 750X power supply. If you've seen my previous videos, I've unboxed and looked at and used the 650 in my office machine. My editing machine has a 760AX and my gaming computer also has a 760AX. The reason for going for the RM instead of the AX is going to be in the, be the price. You don't really need a platinum based power supply all the time and this is a perfect middle of the road. For a hundred bucks for a 750 watt, not only is it going to be extremely efficient and really well built and well designed of a of a overall power supply you're not going to run into any problems if you want to expand if you want to get a better graphics card if you want to buy a more expensive graphics card or even if you want to go into sli you have plenty of room for that and finally to stick it all in together and everything like that i found this case when i was doing some research the fantex eclipse p400s all those numbers silent edition glacier white tempered glass steel atx mid tower case i'm really impressed with this case for 90 bucks i haven't seen it personally but cases are subject to somebody's opinion in relation to what they think looks good. Now you can get some really crappy cases for like 40, 50 bucks. Don't do that. I mean, definitely I, I I'm concerned about this case for the price of it for 90 bucks. If it's a, if it's the traditional Fantex quality, I don't really have anything to be concerned about. The two main cases I stick with is going to be Fantex or Corsair themselves. I have built with Leon Lee. I have built with Thermaltake, but at the end of the day, the two that I would trust first and foremost would be Corsair and then Fantex. So this case itself is a mid-tower ATX, and it's just absolutely gorgeous looking on the outside, according to me. And it has that tempered glass on one side. Tempered glass looks really, really nice if you can wire everything up correctly. So it's kind of definite, you know, up to what you would feel is nice. It has a couple of different things for the drive layout and a couple of different ways that even if you wanted to go ahead and take them out, it looks like you can mount SSDs right there. So you could take those rails out if you needed to. I don't know if it has any built-in lighting or anything like that. And I didn't include any additional fans, but it looks like it only has two fans, one on the back, one on the front, both of them probably 120 millimeter, but you can put three fans, if not more, uh, probably only three on the front there, one on the back, and then you can have your 240 millimeter radiator on the top. So really good layout overall for those things. Very basic, has the room to expand to the additional mechanical drives if you need to, has some nice like grommets and some uh, of its own wire management style. I don't exactly know what that is, but it looks cool and the under uh, underneath power supply with the correct grates and everything like that. And you know what it has on the front, if only has two USB, doesn't have C, I don't really care about that at all. If you really need it, then focus on a different case. But for 90 bucks, I would put the computer that I built out for you in this case, no problem. And obviously you don't have to stick with the white case. They have a whole bunch of different colors if you wanna search for them, but I really liked this case a lot. So there you have it, guys. There's the actual build guide that I would recommend if I was gonna go and build a computer today. There are a couple of things you can save some money on. Like I said, you don't need to get 32 gigs of RAM. You can knock that down probably 100, 150 bucks by getting less RAM. You don't need to get the M.2 SSD, uh, but I would recommend getting an SSD regardless of which, because that's just gonna give you much better performance. Your game's gonna load faster. Everything's gonna be a much smoother experience. Again, you don't need to go with an entire four terabyte mechanical drive. Go smaller if you want to, or skip it all together if you wanna just go with an external. That's fine as well. The graphics card, if you wanna get a 1060, I'd recommend getting the six gig variant, but it's only about $150 more to get the eight gig 1070 than it is to get the uh, 1060 of a six gig. So so that's something to keep in mind. I'd probably recommend getting the 1070, especially if you're into gaming. That way you know it's going to be lasting you quite a bit longer. And then case and power supply, those are pretty much a sets in stone sort of thing. I wouldn't modify the power supply at least. The case, if you want to, yeah, but that's kind of all subject to what you find appealing. The more expensive the case, usually the better it's going to be, but that doesn't hold true 100%. 
but in relation to a $100 case or a $50 case, the $100 case is probably going to be better 10 out of 10 times. So thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to build something that would die in a couple of months, go ahead and give this video a thumbs down. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification to be notified whenever I come out with a new video. And keep in mind that I'm coming out with a part two of this that's going to explain why I built exactly what I built. And if you have any questions, feel free to tweet me at the Don Tech, or like I said, leave them in the comment down below. I'll see you in the next video, and remember, the Don's got your back.